Okay, here we've got this nice uh, red sort of cloth cover with the gold design that says design its fundamentals and application. And it's got this uh, pretty intricate uh, layout here. It says design with the pattern on the side. It says Bush and Wellborn and then the little Brown and Company uh, publishing company at the bottom there. And on the back it's just a uh, red and a uh, no gilding on the sides or anything. The front isn't even gilded, it's just sort of a yellow pattern on the front. Um, here's the uh, first brief title page, Design, Its Fundamentals and Applications. Um, and here's the full title. Uh, it says, Design, Its Fundamentals and Applications by Florence Guild Bush, uh, a Bachelor's in Science, former instructor in design and home economics in Pittsfield High School, Pittsfield, Illinois, and Francis Wellborn, a Bachelor's in Education, uh, instructor in Design and Home Economics in Pittsfield High School, Pittsfield, Illinois, with a forward by Ada Hess, Illinois State Supervisor of Home Economics Education. And we've got this little print here for the publishing house, I believe. And then uh, published in Boston in 1933. So about 90 years old or uh, 91 years old. And uh, here's the original copyright. And then we've got this dedicatory message here in this design uh, dedicated to our students whose presence, inspiration, and work have helped shape these facts into a book. And we've got this uh, wonderful border and the sort of uh, uh, font there. And we've got a foreword. Uh, let's see here. It says, art is playing an increasingly important role in homemaking instruction. In fact, it may be considered as a most essential part of life. No homemaking can truly be counted as successful. That does not take into account the intellectual, spiritual, and aesthetic well-being of the family. Beauty and harmony are as necessary to life as the necessities. Uh, many of the best books now available in art are obviously intended for the teacher or for art students. This book is intended primarily for high school students of home economics who have had little or no previous training in art. It is an attempt to present a manual of definite directions, information, and illustrations for the student. So it's got that forward, and then it's also got a, a preface and a note to the teacher there. And then it's also got this uh, section that's for uh, to the students. And then we have an introduction, so we have all of this uh, preliminary uh, material here. And then we have the table of contents. Let's take a look. So that's everything we just saw. We've got unit one, fundamental uh, principles of design. Uh, lettering, picture cutting, principles of composition, etc. And then unit two is all about costume. So it's got figure and line study, personal coloring, history of costume. And then we've got unit three, which is all about the home. So it's got the evolution of a house, building a home, inside finishes, furniture, interior decoration, and ideals. So here's unit one, fundamental principles of design. And so it starts with the section on lettering with a brief history. It says lettering had its beginning in stone carvings and clay printings. Neither of these at first were done in characters you could read. The later ones, old Roman carvings, were done in letters almost like the capitals we use in our ordinary book printing today. These letters took on their present form about the 9th century BC. The Romans, we find, used two types. The capitals we see in inscriptions on stones and a degraded cursive form of letter used for business written on parchment, but chiefly known to us through scribblings on the walls of Pompeian houses done by schoolboys of the day. And then it goes on to say that that is probably the origins of our upper and lowercase. So here's the uppercase Roman alphabet there. And then we've got a lowercase equivalent on the next page. And then here it shows the difference between stick and block letters. And then we've got stick and shaded letters as well. And then a full example of a shaded alphabet with the uh, figures at the bottom. And here's a uh, different variations of the E with the location and length of the crossbar in the middle changing. And here's some different uh, font types in general. We've got Old English, Italics, uh, we've got a script font, Gothic, American poster, a modern form it says, and then Gothic variation and shaded. This book just has a, a ton of great illustrations and diagrams, so this is another section uh, starting about uh, picture cutting here, so just drawing pictures basically. 
And this is uh, an example of using a circle method to create the figure of a person. And here's the same sort of thing for getting the proportions of a head correctly. And then here's a sort of silhouette image of uh, what was made using that uh, uh, blocking uh, method. And then here's a chapter on the principles of composition, and it starts with proportion. Proportion is the pleasing relationship of all the parts of an object with one another. The parts of an object should be related to one another and to the whole object in an interesting manner. This prevents monotony as a result of the sameness of equal division and the lack of interest and harmony which comes of unrelated divisions. And here's an example of the Parthenon at Athens. Uh, uh, as an example of good proportion, we've got uh, these two images showing good and poor examples here. Not quite sure the difference there. And then here's uh, an example of balance as exemplified in dress lines. So the, the one labeled A is supposed to show equal and formal, B is disturbed, and then B with the apostrophe there is unequal and informal. Here's an example of balance uh, as shown in stage settings. Those are just uh, pretty images there. and We've got a uh, balance as exemplified in architecture of houses too, which look pretty modern. Um, and then here's some patterns. We've got borders, all over patterns, and then a dress pattern there it looks like. Um, yeah, so this just has a ton of nice uh, diagrams and just interesting to look at. Uh, good inspiration for graphic design or just any sort of uh, artistry, I suppose. Um, here's a section for pen techniques. Of the various mediums of picture expression, pen and ink drawing is one of the most important, most widely used, and most interesting to do. Examples are seen daily in pictures, cartoons, and magazine illustrations. The representation of black and white of a scene with all colors strained out is sometimes difficult to do in this world of color. Here is where you really see tones. Any simple scene from the window is composed of tones. Sky, tree, uh, trees, tree trunks, grass, and other objects. In most cases, each in a different tone is, is a different tone. Uh, yeah, so this section is all about using a uh, sort of patterns of uh, ink drawing or, or line drawing to create the illusion of different tones or shades. It's got examples there. All right. And we aren't even that far into the book yet. We've still got quite a bit to go here. This is just a, an example of that sort of ink drawing. Um, so I'm going to flip ahead. Let's take a look at this. So, oh, so this is great. This is the history of costume. Um, so it shows a bunch of different types of uh, outfits here related to different periods. So this is the prehistoric, and it's got some patterns and designs there from prehistoric times. And now it shows uh, ancient Egyptian and some Asiatic designs here. Um, so it shows their dress at the top. This is a Greek and Roman. These are just really beautiful, um, and then it's got sort of design motifs at the bottom here. So you can see that Greek key is a pattern, a scroll pattern. And this is for 500 AD and 1100, so Byzantine, um, it's labeled. It's got all of these different designs at the top in this archway, and then these other designs at the bottom here. This one's showing a holy monogram. And then here we have the 1200s and the 1300s. Um, all right, and then we've got uh, some Celtic knots, it looks like, there up in the top left, and then some other designs. And then this is for the 1400s. And then we've got the other designs at the bottom here. That's starting to look like sort of knights and ladies and things. And then this is uh, the 1500s more intricate symbols at the bottom. And then that looks like a uh, Queen Elizabeth. So this is the uh, 1600s uh, patterns from the Orient, it says, heart-shaped hat. And here on the left, it's sort of a Marie Antoinette type, and it's got, um, this is from the 1700s, powdered wig, etc. And here's the 1800s and then the 1850s. Um, there's different uh, different uh, outfits down at the bottom as well. And here's 1880s and then 1905, so we're getting a little more granular with our time periods um, since it's getting closer to the current day. There's a shirtwaist, peg top pants, tube 10, 
all sorts of funny names for those old outfits. And then here we have, let's see, uh, 1918 and 1928. So this came out in 1933, remember? So just uh, five years uh, ago was 1928 when this book came out. Um, and then this is the present day, apparently. All right, pajamas for daytime wear is one of the things there. And then an off-the-face hat. And then this is the last section or unit. This is for the home. I'm just going to do sort of a brief look through here. So there's some sections for furniture. This shows a disguised type of radiator and then a concealed type of radiator. Um, here's a few different uh, designs for chairs um, with their names at the bottom here. I don't recognize any of those. All right, so, yep, and we're getting to an appendix here at the end, and then uh, at the very end, there's an index as well, so, um, yeah, so that's sort of, uh, yep, so there's the index, and then we're at the very end there. All right, so that's a design, its fundamentals and applications. Uh, if you like this video or if you just uh, like watching these videos, give us a like or a comment, and feel free to subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. All right. Bye.